In May 2023, the Moldovan Autonomous Unit of Gagauzia went to the polls to elect a new governor. However, amidst allegation of widespread voting irregularities and of Russian meddling, the central government has contested the outcome. All this has raised concerns about the possibility of renewed tensions in a region that had once tried to break away, but had seemingly been fully reintegrated in a rare example of a peacefully resolved separatist conflict. So, what lies behind the current tensions and just how serious a problem is it? Hello and welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Kerlinzi and here I take an informed look at international relations, conflict security and statehood. There are several distinct ways that secessionist conflicts can end. First, and rarely in the modern era, the breakaway territory can gain its independence. The parent state, as the country it's leaving is usually known, accepts the loss and the seceding area becomes a sovereign state on the world stage. More usually, however, the parent state manages to win back control by armed force, suppressing the rebellion and reasserting control. Another possibility is that the dispute reaches a stalemate and becomes what we call a frozen conflict. The parent state can't regain control, but the breakaway territory can't gain international acceptance. While not strictly a settlement, these situations can often last indefinitely. But sometimes the dispute is resolved peacefully. Usually, this will mean that the sides reach a negotiated settlement that sees the breakaway territory granted a degree of self-rule within the parent state. One of the most interesting examples of a negotiated settlement in recent times is Gagauzia. Having broken away from Moldova as the Soviet Union collapsed, it was persuaded to reintegrate albeit under rather unusual terms. But while it's generally been seen as a success story, the situation is less stable than it seems, as highlighted by the current developments over the election of the governor. So, is there really cause for concern about the developments in Gagauzia? The Republic of Moldova lies in Southeast Europe. Landlocked between Romania and Ukraine, it's 34,000 square kilometres or 13,000 square miles in size. This makes it the 135th largest UN member. However, around 4,200 square kilometres fall under the control of the internationally unrecognised breakaway territory of Transnistria. The country's population stands at 2.6 million. While Romanian-speaking Moldovans comprise the largest group, there are several prominent minority communities. These include Russians, Ukrainians and the Gagauz. Gagauzia, also known as Gagauzieri, is in the south of Moldova, close to the Black Sea. Classed as an autonomous territorial unit of Moldova, it's around 1,850 square kilometres or 715 square miles, or about 5.5% of the country's territory. Its population stands at around 140,000. Of this, 80% are ethnic Gagauz, a Turkic people whose original language is closely related to Turkish. But unlike most other Turkic nations who follow Islam, the Gagauz are Orthodox Christian. Moreover, Russian is now generally spoken in the region. The origins of the Gagauz people are shrouded in mystery. Scholars have suggested many theories about their ancestry. Some believe that they were a Turkic tribe that migrated to Southeast Europe before the main Turkish invasions in the 12th century. Others think that they could be Greeks or Bulgarians who adopted a Turkic language but retained their Christianity. Whatever the exact ethnic roots of the people, the available evidence seems to suggest that they were living in Bulgaria at some point before the expansion of the Ottoman Empire into Southeast Europe during the 15th and 16th centuries. However, our story really starts in the early 19th century with the expansion of Imperial Russia into Ottoman territories. In 1812, Russia took control of the easternmost part of Moldavia, a predominantly Romanian-speaking area known as Bessarabia. Having expelled the Muslim Tatars living in the region, Russia wanted to keep Romanian nationalism in check. In an era where religious affiliation was often more potent than ethno-linguistic affiliation, it persuaded the Christian Orthodox Gagauz to migrate northwards and settle in the area. 
But these attempts to change the demographics did little to dampen Romanian nationalism in Bessarabia, especially after the western part of Moldavia united with neighbouring Wallachia to form the Kingdom of Romania in 1881. In 1918, against the backdrop of the Russian Revolution and the First World War, Bessarabia declared independence before uniting with Romania. However, it was a short-lived union. In July 1941, the Soviet Union seized the region, creating the Moldavian Soviet Socialist Republic, one of the USSR's 15 top-level republics. Over the following decades, the Soviet authorities attempted to quell pro-Romanian sentiment in the republic by promoting a separate and distinct Moldovan identity. As well as bringing in ethnic Russian and Ukrainian settlers, the Soviet authorities also focused on assimilating the Gagauz. As a result, Russians steadily supplanted the Turkic Gagauz language, especially in the higher levels of Gagauz society. All this would have a significant effect as the Soviet Union crumbled at the end of the 1980s. As the Moldovan SSR leadership reasserted a Romanian identity, the other nationalities pushed back. In November 1989, a special Gagauz Congress proclaimed a separate autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, an ASSR, a second-level territorial entity below a Soviet Republic within the Moldavian SSR. However, this was rejected by the local communist authorities. And on the 19th of August 1990, Gagauzia declared independence. But as Moldovan police and security units moved in to quell the rebellion, clashes broke out, leading Soviet troops to step in to keep the peace. Together with the conflict in Transnistria, which erupted at roughly the same time, this meant that when the Soviet Union finally collapsed in December 1991 and the Republic of Moldova became a fully independent sovereign state, it emerged as a new country facing two secessionist disputes. But unlike Transnistria, the conflict in Gagauzia was soon resolved. Although there were occasional clashes in Gagauzia over the next couple of years, by 1994 the situation had changed significantly. For a start, early suggestions of possible unification between Moldova and Romania came to nothing. Meanwhile, the Moldovan authorities took steps to ease Gagauz's concerns, such as introducing greater religious and language rights and legalising the country's Communist Party. Meanwhile, the Gagauz leadership, which remains strongly pro-Russian, moved away from its original demands for independence and instead began calling for territorial autonomy. This all came together in 1994 when the Moldovan parliament passed a law making Gagauzia an autonomous territorial unit of the country with extensive control over its affairs. This included a parliament, government, judiciary, symbols and a governor or bashkan. It also stipulated that Russian would be an official language alongside Gagauz and Moldovan. On top of this, and crucially, Article 1 of the law also explicitly stated that if Moldova's status as an independent state ever changed, the people of Gagauzia would have the right of external self-determination. In other words, if Moldova ever joined Romania, Gagauz could become independent. In March 1995, the agreement was sealed by a referendum in those areas with the substantial Gagauz population to see if they wanted to join the new autonomous unit. In the end, 30 of the 36 regions polled agreed to do so. Over the following years, it appeared as if the issue of Gagauzia had been settled, especially given the existence of a pro-Russian communist government in Moldova from 2001 to 2009. However, by the second decade of the millennium, the situation was changing. Following the emergence of a pro-EU administration, Moldova initialed an association and free trade agreement with the European Union in late 2013. To many Gagauz, this was seen as a backdoor way of securing a union with Romania. In response, they now called for closer ties to Russia. The following February, the Gagauz administration organised a non-binding referendum on joining the Eurasian Customs Union, the Russian-led trade area including Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. Despite strong opposition from the central government in Moldova, 
the results were overwhelming, with a 70% turnout, 98% voted in favour of the Russian-led customs union, with 97% also voting against closer ties to the EU. On top of this, 99% endorsed Gagauzia's right to secede if Moldova ever gave up its independence. After this, Gagauzia continued to pursue a distinctly pro-Russian path and in 2015 it elected a new governor who strongly supported close ties to Moscow. But things also began to shift subtly. With funding from the European Union, the region's infrastructure began to improve significantly. On top of this, Turkey, now much more actively reaching out to Turkic communities across Southeast Europe and the former Soviet Union, expanded its presence in Gagauzia, providing a potential counterpoint to Moscow's influence. So, what sparked the latest crisis? In truth, it's been fed by several distinct factors. First is the general political environment. The war in neighbouring Ukraine has certainly played a significant part. This has seen Moscow ramp up its activities. Outside observers have now noted a substantial increase in Russian propaganda. This is linked to broader claims by the Moldovan government that Russia has been trying to undermine the country more generally. Aside from Gagauzia, there's also been renewed tensions in Transnistria and the country's president has accused Moscow of planning a coup. On top of all this, there have been months of mass anti-government protests in the capital. But there are also other issues at play. The Moldovan government's pursuit of rapid EU membership has also fed the long-standing Gagauz fears about Romanian integration. This suspicion has also been strengthened following the Moldovan parliament's decision in March 2023 to refer to the country's national language as Romanian rather than Moldovan. But the immediate source of tensions has been the election of a new governor in May 2023 after the end of the second and final term of the current incumbent. While all eight candidates standing were seen to be pro-Russian, one stood out, Yevgenia Gudsel, representing the populist Shaw Party. Named after an oligarch who fled the country following a massive bank embezzlement scheme, a charge that seen him sentenced to 14 years in jail, it's led the anti-government protests in recent months. In the second round runoff held on the 14th of May, she won 52% of the vote against a candidate representing the Socialist Party. However, the results are highly contested. Police and prosecutors have claimed widespread irregularities, including vote buying, marred both election rounds. This even saw police raid the Electoral Commission's headquarters in Gagauzia and seize ballot papers. Meanwhile, the government has questioned the validity of the outcome. But while it may now try to secure a rerun of the vote, the Gagauz parliament has already approved the result. This has potentially put the two sides on a collision course. Of course, the question is whether all this could lead to new separatist tensions. For the moment, there's no indication that it will, and Gagauzia would have little to gain by trying to break away again. Distant from Russia, Moscow wouldn't be able to offer any real support if it tried. But looking further ahead, though, it could raise questions about the future of Gagauzia within Moldova. There could well be calls for the region to break away and become independent if Moldova does decide to join the European Union, a development that many Gagauz still see as equivalent to unification with Romania. That said, the prospect of Moldovan EU membership is still a very long way off, and much could change in the meantime. For the moment, all this could be problematic in other ways. Most obviously, it could become an additional source of populist pro-Russian pressure on the government and help galvanise anti-EU sentiment. This will deepen societal and political divisions within Moldova. In the meantime, the latest developments in Gagauzia are a practical example of how, even when separatist territories are reintegrated, deep-rooted tensions can still become persistent sources of instability many decades later. Of course, Gagauzia isn't the only issue affecting Moldova. Here are some more videos on the country that you might find interesting. Alternatively, here's another video that you might like. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.